Welcome everyone to Race Face TV and today's episode of Race Face Spotlight. We're going to head out to Falcon, Colorado, where we find 10 year old race car driver Justice Sokol. Now, Justice is half of the Red Army with his older brother Colby Sokol, where they have been dominating the quarter midget ranks for the past couple of years. But now they're stepping up to the 600 micro sprint series. So, Justice, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing great, man. I'm talking to you. How much better could it be? I don't think it could get much better. I don't think it could get much better either. So what have you been up to all winter? Uh, I've just been up to help my brother practice, help my dad work on my brother's car, learning, learning more about the 600s, and just really getting to know how to drive the 600s. And... Yeah. Now you've been kind of doing that. I, I see a lot of pictures every once in a while, I should say, on your on your social media platforms. You've been doing a lot of simulator driving, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've been on the simulator lately, just been trying to practice how to how to race the race the dirt cars and get through the corners, passing people and learning how to use throttle control. Well, let me ask you something. When you get up off that simulator, do you feel like you got like some dirt on you that you need to wipe off? Yes, I do. I you especially do? do when I'm at the races because there's usually dirt either in my hair, my ears, or my nose. <laughs> or all of the above. So I learned something about you in the last couple of weeks. I learned that you are a big hockey fan. And well, it's now the, now we're into the Stanley Cup playoffs. So who are your favorite teams? And who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Uh, my favorite teams are the my home team, the Colorado Avalanche, because uh, they're my home team and they've stepped up quite a bit here in this playoffs season. And my favorite, my most favorite team is the Washington Capitals because uh, I like Alex Ovechkin and Braden Holtby. They're really good players. All right, so. I just got to ask, why did you not pick the Tampa Bay Lightning? That's my team. Uh, uh, I didn't pick the Tampa Bay Lightning because they're uh, my parents. My parents have always liked the Washington Capitals, and I've and I've trying to and I've been sticking with my parents. And uh, I mean, I like I like both teams really okay. good. And I think. All right. Well, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't like the Lightning right now, anyway, because you know they've lost three playoff games in a row. So all the other teams got to have as big a smile on their face as you do right now, because I think everybody was kind of worried about Tampa Bay when they were heading into the playoffs. So, but I don't think it's going to turn out very good for them. So, Justice, I also am aware that you're kind of like an outdoors guy. You like to go fishing. So, do you got a good fishing story to share with us? Uh, I have one. It was from the last time we went fishing. Uh, we were all sitting down, and my papa got a fish on his hook, and I was like, I said, Papa, Papa, you have a fish on your hook. So then I ran over, grabbed his hook. He's like, he's like, do it. Reel it in. So I reeled it in, and I got the fish. You got the fish? So you got his fish, and you got credit for landing it, though, right? All right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So I also understand that you like hunting and you just went through a hunter safety course. So does that mean you're ready to go like to Africa and go big, get big game hunting or, or what's your plans as far as the hunting side of things? Uh, my plans for the hunting side of things is just to work my way up to the big game. I have to be 12 to uh, uh, hunt big game. So right now I'm gonna hunt small game. Uh, I'm going, I'm gonna try and I think fox or coyote is in there, so maybe uh, get a couple of those, some rabbit, some geese, so uh, yeah. That's a, that's a big variety, so who did you get the hunting bug from? Is your dad a hunter or is your papa a hunter or who's the, who's the hunters in the family? Uh, my family just carry, carried it on down. My, uh, my dad's dad was a big hunter. My dad was a hunter, and then my mom's, my mom, my papa was a hunter too. All he right. likes so going you're just hunting. Carrying, you're just carrying on the family tradition then. 
Thank All you. right, so let's now shift gears. Let's now go and let's talk a little bit of racing. You ready to do that? Yes. Okay, so to start off the 2019 racing season or ending the 2018 season, whichever way you want to look at that, um, you went out and raced a junior sprint at like the Super Bowl of junior sprint racing because you went to the Tulsa shootout. So, I mean, that's really like, you know, your first dirt race, right? Yes, it was exactly my first dirt race. So your first dirt race, you went to the biggest race of the year. So what was that like? That was, that was a really fun experience by getting to go out there and again, watch my brother learn, learning from him. We're also learning from my dad and uh, just having fun. I get, I get, I got to watch my brother almost win the junior sprint in the junior sprint. And, uh, but we, my car, we were struggling and then we figured out the car for the B main, but I didn't, I didn't get enough positions to transfer into the LCQ. Right. So let me just ask you something. There were some pretty big name racers there. Did you see any famous racers kind of strolling around inside the Tulsa shootout, uh, under the, under the dome kind of? Yeah, I think, I think I saw Swammy, Sammy Swindell, Brady Bacon, all those, all those good drivers. I saw, uh, I didn't get to see Christopher Bell, but, uh, I got to see all those other good drivers. So if you did get to see Christopher Bell, or let's say Christopher Bell's actually watching this program tonight, what do you got to say to him? You're going to be saying like, Hey, in about four more years, I'm coming after you better watch out. Uh, I went, I wish I would say that, but I would, in a, in a couple years, I, I would probably still, I'd be learning how to drive a dirt widget in real life and not just on iRacing. But, uh, if Christopher Bell were to be watching this, I'd say, hopefully I'm on the same race team as you and because you're a really good driver and all the drivers on Kate, on Keith Coons Motorsports are good drivers and it'd be cool to be there. Yeah, no doubt there. So I think you got something pretty special going on in your garage right now. You guys are building you a brand new 600 micro sprint. So what's that been like getting the car in and getting the motor in? And, and I know that you've been actively out there working on the car and everything. So what's that been like? Uh, it's been, it's just been, it's a slow process at the beginning. And then once we get done with the first part of it, we'll start moving on and we'll get, and it will pick up the pace and we'll just be going through it pretty quickly. And then soon enough here, we'll be done and ready to race. So the question is, has Colby let you drive his 600 micro sprint yet? No, he doesn't. What's with that? Uh, just because... I don't know. I I wish I could. I wish I could race his, but it, I think it's because uh, we're both different sizes, and uh, his seat is. I don't. I'm not sure if his seat's my size, and I'll fit in it. But yeah. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about. You know, I guess you can only compare that to the junior sprint. Well, what was the biggest difference between the junior sprint and racing a quarter midget? Besides the difference that you were racing you know, on pavement compared to, you know, racing the junior sprint on dirt. But tell us a little bit about the difference there, the power size and how much quicker that car was. Uh, the car was, the car felt a little quicker. It felt like the, almost about the same speed, uh, just different, different track material, learning how to drive on dirt, race on dirt, instead of learning how to, how to just, turn the wheel, turn the wheel, but they're both, they were both fun to race. I think, I think I like the dirt more. You think you like the dirt more. All right. So the big question, what is it like racing against your brother? Uh, it's fun. It's fun because we both get to learn off each other when we, it's fun passing each other. Cause then you're like, see ya when you pass them and, um, <laughs> Then it's like it. Then you, when you get around him, if I, uh, I'll learn off of him when I'm behind him, 
and he'll learn off of me when I'm in front of him. Right. So now you're on the dirt. You can kind of you can do that little slingshot, little slide job, right? And just throw a little dirt mm -hmm. on him and go, see you later, brother. Yep. All right. So here, here we're going to pay a scenario. We're coming down. You just took the white flag. Now you're behind Colby. You're coming down the back straightaway, heading into turn three. The question is, <clears throat> if you have to bump him a little bit to move him to win, are you going to do that? Yes, I will. And the reason why I do that is because during the race, more one and two, I don't want to take his chance away or my chance away from getting first or possibly second. But if it's white flag and I'm I'm going into the corner three and he's he's right in front of me and I have to move him out of the way, yes, I would move him out of the way. All right. There you go, Colby. You better be watching out. He's coming after you. Now, the question is, would Colby do the same thing to you? He would probably do the same thing to me. He probably would do the same thing with you. Well, I can't wait to see you guys get out there. Uh, you've got a big schedule in front of you. Do you know exactly how many races that you're going to be running this year? Uh, I'm not sure how many races we're going to be running this year, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll be doing most of the 600 ones. I know I'll be doing quite a few 600 ones next year, right. and I'll be doing quite a few junior sprint ones this year. Okay, so you're going to be dueling it up. You're going to be running juniors and micros. So is there a track out there that you're looking forward to going to that you just kind of like have that anticipation that I can't wait to go race there? Uh, I'm waiting to go to uh, uh, Port City again because in my 600 because that seemed like a really fun track to race a 600 at, and there's really good competition there. Absolutely. Port City is known to have some of the best junior and micro sprint racers show up there anywhere in the country. So uh, we look forward to following you. Um, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to, like any of your sponsors? Because I know that you get a tremendous amount of support from your mom and dad and your grandma and your grandpa and, and Big A. We can't leave him out. But uh, you want to give a shout out to some of your sponsors? Uh, I'd like to thank Rainbow Sprinkler, Peak View Plumbing. The near speed, the near speed shop, AFCO. I mean, not AFCO. Advanced Racing Suspension, Staller, EMI, Courtney and Adam Barth, Roger, Roger McCluskey, or uh, and. Well, why are you uh, thinking Yoshi about that last one? I got a question for you because we kind of we kind of slipped by this a little bit. You were a USAC national champion last year, and you went to the big banquet in Indianapolis. What was that like, Justice, to be able to walk up on that stage and actually know that you were kind of retiring retiring at 10 years old? That's, that's something I'm still having a hard time adjusting to, but you're retiring at 10 year old, but you did it with a national championship. What was that like? That was really fun because I was just, I was up there on the big stage. I got to see all of my friends, my family, and uh, I got to see all the other championship winners. And the Red Army had a good last USAC point two five series. Well, there you got it. USAC national champion, Justice Sokol. Justice, wishing you a good luck this season. We're going to be following you. We can't wait to have you back later in the year on Race Face Spotlight. So everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, keep an eye on this young man. Go out and check out JusticeSokolRacing.com. You can follow him at Justice Sokol Racing on Facebook and on Instagram. And everybody, remember, go out there, support local racing in your communities, and we'll see all of you back here next week.